We're back for your ears only. I'm David Alpern. I'm Eddie Robinson with this quote from the news. Responding to the quartet's statement with 1,100 no's. That was Palestinian negotiator Saeb Arakat after Israel, under renewed international pressure for peace talks, announced 1,100 new housing units for a settlement in Arab East Jerusalem. Now this. I think it's right that the party congress support the candidacy of the current prime minister, Vladimir Putin, in the role of the country's president. There is nothing that could stop us. I have not lost my commander's voice. We can speak without the microphone. The crowd at the new Russia party convention in Moscow seemed surprised at what so many around the world had always expected. After stepping back to second place in the government hierarchy for a required spell, Prime Minister Vladimir Putin arranged to have himself renominated as president by the man he had previously put in that position, Dmitry Medvedev, who obediently agreed now to exchange places. While the Kremlin's top spot is not what it used to be for the United States as in Cold War days, it's still a matter of serious concern for policymakers in Washington and the private sector chiefs who want to do business in Russia. And to analyze the return of Putin to power, he never fully relinquished, for your ears only, we're joined by former Moscow correspondent David Satter, now a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, also at the Foreign Policy Institute of the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. His books include Darkness at Dawn, The Rise of the Russian Criminal State, and It Was a Long Time Ago and It Never Happened Anyway, Russia and the Communist Past. Welcome to our program. Well, thank you. I'm uh, delighted to be with you. Was there ever much doubt that Putin would seek to reclaim the presidency or that Medvedev could acquire enough personal power to prevent it? There was doubt about it because it was a question of whether Putin intended to keep Medvedev uh, in office for four years or eight. There was a uh, little reason to believe that Putin, that Medvedev was an independent figure in any way, although part of the strategy was to give everyone, the world and people in Russia as well, the impression that he was independent. I think that what happened here was that uh, when Putin finished eight years in office and hit upon the constitutional ban on a third consecutive term, uh, he had to decide whether to violate the Constitution or to hold on to power in a way uh, in which it uh, seemed to the world that he was abiding by it. And he chose the latter alternative. How important uh, is it that the Russian finance minister resigned and said he'd refuse to serve under Medvedev as uh, prime minister? I think it's quite important. Uh, Alexei Kudrin was uh, objecting to increases in spending. He had been the really the savior of the Putin presidency, because he insisted that revenues from from oil be placed in a stabilization fund instead of uh, being used right away. And had they been spent as they were received, the result would have been, first of all, hyperinflation, and second of all, a lack of uh, budgetary resources to meet the crisis that took place in 2008. The fact that he's resigning now and blaming it on Medvedev uh, is an indication that the policies that are now going to be pursued, whether by Medvedev or Putin, are unlikely to be as financially prudent as those that were pursued under Kudrin. This, in turn, is very significant, because if he's correct, then the move to create a permanent presidency under Vladimir Putin is fraught with danger, because this can mean nothing besides stagnation. And under conditions in which the country is beginning to face economic pressures, uh, there'll be no safety valve, there'll be no democratic institutions that will allow people to express their discontent or to have an effect on the course of events. Let me ask you about the criminal aspect of Russia's economy and society about which you've written so well and which still makes it a scary place for Western business. It's terribly scary. For one thing, Russia is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. It's the most corrupt major economy. Uh, it ranks, a high, according to Transparency International's rating, it ranks 154th out of 176 countries. So it's uh, on a level in terms of corruption with the Central African Republic and Cambodia, both of which are extremely corrupt, but are, of course, not as modern as Russia. And Bribery 
and uh, kickbacks have become really under Putin part of the fabric of governing. Under Yeltsin, uh, the criminal element uh, extorted money from people, they intimidated people, they took bribes. But uh, under Putin, with the strengthening of the government apparatus, the, the result has not been an, an end to bribery or corruption. It's been simply the, the uh, degradation of all of the normal state institutions. And right now, Russia has, is run by a, a government bureaucracy, which is uh, complete, not only completely corrupt, but uh, has adopted corruption as the normal way of doing business. What will Putin mean for Moscow-Washington relations? Well, I don't think that the difference will be tremendous. Uh, in fact, the, the improvement, so-called improvement in relations that took place under Medvedev was largely a product of American concessions to Russia. Uh, to the extent that uh, America is, con- is willing to continue to make such concessions, uh, there may not be much of a change. But Putin's rhetoric will, will definitely be more nationalistic. And, his, uh, and, and the attitude that he will depict uh, in, and that he will personify in world affairs will be more pugnacious, more assertive. Uh, Medvedev uh, projected a milder image, and uh, uh, but the the real underlying problem is not Medvedev versus Putin. The problem is that the country is likely to to face very serious economic, social, and demographic problems. And the best way to deal with those in a con- in under conditions in which you've got one president who has no intention of giving up power is to direct the anger of, of the Russian people toward the West. And that's, uh, I think we're likely to see that under Putin. Former Moscow correspondent David Satter is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, also at the John Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. His books include Darkness at Dawn, The Rise of the Russian Criminal State, and It Was a Long Time Ago and It Never Happened Anyway, Russia and the Communist Past. Next, teens and vaccines for your ears only. <laughs> 